All right, so as a follow-up to my last horrible video on making a gaming montage with iMovie, I wanted to make a video on how to make a gaming montage with Premiere Pro. So if you want to be able to make your montages look something like this... Then keep watching this video to find out how I do it. To get started, first thing you need to do is open up Premiere Pro, then open a new project and call it whatever you want. And then make sure you get your clips and your music into your timeline by dragging them in. Then after that, you might want to arrange and pick out the clips that you want or put them into an order. Now, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you how to make your montage. Then it wouldn't really be your montage. What I can do is give you tips on how to make your montage look better. So here are some of my top tips when you're making a montage on Premiere Pro. The first and most important thing that I do with my montages is that I make sure everything is in sync with the music, or at least as much as I can possibly edit is in sync with the music. The most important thing that you want to have in sync is your shots. So for example, later in the montage, and you, I showed you this part at the beginning of the video, uh, there is a sniper shot that I synced directly onto a beat drop. Now to do that, you would find the beat drop where it starts back up, and then you'd put a marker on it by pressing M on your keyboard. Make sure that the music track is selected, and then put a marker on the sniper shot, or wherever you get the kill, and then match the two markers you've made up together so they're in line. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's satisfying to watch, but it's also satisfying to make as well. This kind of thing can also be applied to when you transition from one clip to another. But the key thing is that you are able to match moments in your montage with the music that you're using. Now this next tip is optional, you don't have to do it, but uh, I usually do it a lot in my montages. Uh, make it, I make it look cinematic, sort of, by putting uh, black bars on top of my clips. So what you would do is create an adjustment layer by clicking on this icon here and then going to adjustment layer and press OK. And then you stretch it out across the whole montage and then go to effects and then search up crop then drag the crop effect onto the adjustment layer then you would go to effect controls make sure you clicked on the adjustment layer and then change the top and bottom to about 20 percent another thing you can do with this cinematic black bar is keyframing Typically, keyframing it so the bars open up to where they are now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keyframe to here. I'm going to make, I'm going to turn keyframing on and it's going to make a point here. Keyframing marker here. And I can go all the way back to the start of the effect then I can make each of these 50. So half the screen will be cropped. So that should end up looking like this. So these next two tips are if you're at the point of having finished your montage, or well, the basic structure of your montage, but you haven't put any transitions or any extra special effects in yet. Like, you could upload the montage right now, but it wouldn't look very good. Here's how you can change that. Now, there are several ways you can add transitions into your montage, uh, but this is the way I would recommend, since the preset transitions in 
Premiere Pro aren't really that good. I have a link in the description of this video for a 60 plus transitions pack. <laughs> this is the specific one I use, but basically the point I'm trying to get across is you can use preset transitions from third party sites to put into your montage to make it look better. And you use them just like the crop effect from earlier to make black bars for your montage. It works in exactly the same way, except you're not putting a crop effect on, you're putting a preset transition on the adjustment layer this time. After you download the transition pack, you can go to effects and then click the three lines, then go to import presets. Then navigate through your files until you can find something called 60 plus transitions WGFX. It is a Premiere Pro filter preset file. Once you find the file, you can go ahead and press the open button and it will import directly into your effects tab. So this time you can grab the same adjustment layer that you made before for the black bars, but this time Make sure you put it 5 frames before the cuts between each of the clips because this is important for the preset and how it works. And to navigate between each of the frames you use the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard. So 5 frames on each side of the cut. Then you go to effects, go to presets and then 60 transition WGFX pack and then you can pick a transition that you want to use and then drag it on to the adjustment layer. And now you should be able to see the transition in action. Now in order to put transitions across your entire montage, you could drag out tons of adjustment layers onto each of your cuts and put transitions on them each time, but a much faster way of doing it is by using the Option or Alt key, you can drag the adjustment layer to the cut that you want to drag it to, and then you get rid of the effects that you just put on it, and then put new effects, new pieces, new transitions onto it, and then you can keep going in a rinse and repeat pattern so that each of your cuts in the montage can have a transition. The final tip I'm going to give is how you can make an impact effect on your kill. So say like with that beat drop snipe that I showed at the start of the video for example, when I hit the shot, when I kill the person, you see an effect on it. So I'll show you how to make that effect. You want to go to the frame where you get the kill or where he gets hit, so I'm probably going to go like here or something. And then what this is, is putting a bunch of effects on top of each other and combining them to make a much better looking effect. So we'll start with scale over here. I want to go one frame b before the kill and then put turn on this stopwatch icon, then move to the frame where you get the kill and then scale it up where you want. So I go, I don't know, 100 and let's just do 160. And then I'm probably going to go here and reset it back to 100. So let's see how that looks. And of course you can make that longer if you want to by just dragging out the final keyframe. You can also make this short, the scale shorter by going to the second keyframe. And you'll know you're on the second keyframe because there'll be a blue dot that shows up here. If you're not, then it will just be grey. Once you're on the blue dot, you can turn the number down to 140, for example. It's just something lower, so it has less of an impact. Alright, so next, you can add a brightness effect. Go to br brightness and contrast in your effects tab, and then drag that onto your clip. And then you're kind of doing the same thing that you did with the scale, except you're doing it with the brightness section here. So you want to go to that first, the frame before the kill, and then turn on the keyframe, make sure it's at zero, and then go to the frame of the kill and then increase the brightness to 
let's just do 45. And then you could go to the same third and final keyframe where it gets reset back to 100. Uh, so, and then just reset the brightness back to zero. So that should look like this. The next one isn't going to be as noticeable. We're going to add a blur effect. So go to your effects tab again and then search up Gaussian Blur. Drag that onto your clip. Doing the exact same kind of thing again. So you're at the frame before the kill. And then you turn on the keyframe, go to the frame where you get the kill and increase the blurriness. You don't want to do the blurries too much because then it'll just be insane like that. So I'm probably going to do 25. And then, yeah, exactly the same thing. Reset to zero here. So you're going to want to search up lens distortion. And then drag it onto your clip and just do the exact same thing. Go to the frame before the kill, turn on the curvature keyframe, and then bring the curvature to a negative number. Because if you do a positive number, then you'll see white around your screen, and we don't want that. So reset to zero, and it should look like this. You don't want to end up making this effect over and over again. So you are going to want to save it into a preset. So what you are going to want to do, hold down the command key if you're on Mac. And I'm pretty sure it's alt on Windows, but don't quote me on that. I don't use Windows for this editing. And then two finger click and save preset. And you can call this whatever you want. So I'm just going to call it kill. Yeah, see, now it's saved onto, saved into your presets folder. And then to put this effect onto any other clip, just go to your presets folder and then drag the effect onto the clip. So then now, you may need to time it or fix the timing of it, but that should be no major problem. So all you have to do to do that is just hold down on your mouse or trackpad and then drag. Make sure you drag the keyframe, the first set of keyframes to a frame before you get the kill. So then it should match up perfectly. So now with the help of at least some of these tips, this is what your montages could end up looking like. Shoot my shot, I'm still with the demons. I keep it thorough. I got five chicks in New York, that means one in each borough. I'm in the pocket like Burl. When I'm back home, no, they treat me like Robert De Niro. Took her to talk about water or churl. Took her home, gave her a cinnamon swirl. I left it in, now I got a one euro. Zeros on zero on zero. That's what my bank account balance say. I got a check from a shit company, now I do anything to new balance say. I bought her a plane to get out of state. I got me a shorty from around the way, said I'm in town. She said she coming over and she down to stay. I got a hit, she been playing that shit, so when she pull up on me, I know what she about to say. What's poppin'? Brand new whip, just hopped in. I got options, I can pass that bitch like Stockton. Just joshing, I'm spending this holiday locked in. My body got rid of them toxins. Sports in the top 10. Callin' my bitch, tell the brother that knock it. Brand new good shit style. I like a thing with low mileage, good boy with no collar. Call me the baby, no tie. I'm real creative and style. Left in my dinner. I seen that hit, make a spinner. And I just flew back from LA on the jet yesterday. I go back and forth like I play tennis. I fuck with your hoe, yeah, I feel for it. Still on the billboard, the number one song in UK. And now they got some fucking rich, all these awesome my dick. I still don't give a fuck what you say. She eat it like a pac man, nigga. Whoop a nigga like a pac man, nigga. I just put up in the back mobile. The reason I ain't fucking with these rap Niggas cause they cap ass niggas and they rats ain't real Believe me, you wanna keep your life and take it easy I'm rockin' water down, just need a squeeze it. These niggas water down, they drink a Fiji My whip is orange and brown like I'm in Cleveland My bitch is mellow yellow like a soda These niggas try to tell us I'm a soldier Hey, somebody yeah. tell them niggas that it's over You know it's baby, nigga What's poppin'? Brand new whip, just hopped in I got options, I can pass that bitch like Stockton I'm scattered, I caught her, I'm out here with somebody's daughter She calling me daddy, I'm somebody's father I gotta go kiss it, I will not go kiss it I put my lips on it like somebody bought it A diamond, a glacier, a card in a wallet She put up the fuck me, but nobody caught it She told me that she wasn't feeling my music I fought it, she told me it's nobody harder And I'm with the G-Ski, I need that shit for the free ski We are not buying no pussy, you selling on Peace Street It's so much work on my celly, I had it